Joining us in studio now is Stephen David Simon, president of the Stonewall Democratic Club here in Los Angeles and the executive director at the City of Los Angeles Department on Disability. Welcome, Stephen. Hello. Good evening. So the Stonewall Democrats have endorsed Hillary Clinton for president, as well as a host of other Democratic nominees for public office, and they've also weighed in on a number of the propositions on the California ballot. Aside from the obvious that Hillary is our Democratic nominee. Um, why are you endorsing her? Record, record, record. Uh, the future of America. Uh, the fact that all the big issues in this election are LGBT issues. Whether, How so? Well, whether we're talking about uh, health care access, housing, homelessness, um, public safety, uh, the gay and lesbian community and transgender and bi community and queer and questioning uh, really care about these issues. Um, our goal isn't just to take marriage, which is in- still extraordinarily important, um, adoption, hate crimes, um, and take them to new levels in the Democratic Party. Our goal is to make sure that um, the electorate is fully informed and that gay voices are really heard on all of these issues. One of the big criticisms about Hillary is a lack of of some active leadership on hot button issues. Um, she did take some time to come around to LGBT issues. Uh, you know, the Nancy Reagan memorial was sort of a, a low moment when she talked about Nancy Reagan opening the conversation for HIV. And if any of us or if any of you were there, you know that that's not what happened. Um, people are concerned that she's kind of she adopts things when it becomes safe to do so. Uh, is there I mean, is this a concern of yours? People like Jill Stein have a little bit more of a, you know, even Gary Johnson, arguably, might have more leadership on that. Um, There are other people in this country that might have greater leadership um, on LGBT issues across the board, but i got to tell you, um, for um, a major politician and leader in America, Hillary Clinton's done an extraordinary job. I mean, at the State Department, she's really gotten up on the international stage and made a difference talking about equal rights, right? Um, Human rights, gay rights, equal rights, um, in ways that no one else uh, has done out of the United States at that level. Um, as a senator, um, she's she's really been a strong supporter of legislation. Um, honestly, I, I think her record, I, I can't even begin to compare it against her, her opponents, right? Well, that... <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just don't know where to go on the notion that uh, Ms. Clinton will be so much better on LGBT issues than Mr. Trump. And I hear people talk about things like, you know, he's the most LGBT friendly, you know, Republican nominee in history. Well, low bar, <laughs> right? And so, you know, waving a flag once at a, you know, at a, at a public event doesn't make you an LGBT hero. Going to, I don't think he even went to, but supporting Elton John's wedding doesn't make you a marriage advocate. Um, I'm really concerned about um, obviously, his choice for vice president, who, if uh, if um, if he were elected, would be probably running much of the show, um, is somebody, Mr. Pence, who's extremely angrily anti-LGBT, and it's simply not acceptable. There are people on the left as well as on the right who are sort of never Hillary people, and uh, their concerns, I think, is that she's been a moderate in many ways. She was a hawk uh, around the Iraq War. Um, how do you address their concerns? You know, I'm going to jump back to sort of Stonewall and its founding in our mission, right? Um, while we educate the general public, while we fight to get LGBT candidates um, elected and LGBT-friendly and supportive candidates elected, our job is to change the Democratic Party and make sure it's as responsive as possible. And that's been true for 40 years now. I think we were founded a little after this radio show was. Um, we were in 75. Um and we've done that kind of educating. i got to tell you, the last eight years have been really tough. I was very excited at an Obama presidency both times. And then I watched this country, because of a conservative Congress, pull to the center. Um, and it's been troubling. But every time someone critiques President Obama around Obamacare, it's because what we all discussed as a community to get in place to help protect Americans, get them health care, got torn apart by a Republican-dominated Congress, and we didn't get what we asked for. And then when it didn't work as well as it could have, they blamed the president. And we've seen that with every major policy initiative, from from war uh, to health care to education, um, on down. And I think um, Ms. Clinton's going to be facing that same issue when she wins tomorrow. Um, And I just hope that we can figure out how to get a Congress and work down ticket, 
and also the state and local level to make sure we have people uh, in government who are trying to make government work. Now, do you think uh, that she would be the candidate she is today had it not been for Bernie Sanders pushing her into that for the past year? Because, I, I mean, I can remember her saying things like, well, single payer is just pie in the sky, you know, as if Canada doesn't exist. And we're not Denmark because those are crazy foreign ideas. It's like, And she finally had to be pushed into embracing things like that because he was just doing so well. Um, no question about it. And I hope that people that were Hillary supporters all the way along can see that and embrace that. Uh, we at Stonewall hosted an event uh, that brought together sort of the Hillary and uh, Bernie folks in L.A. a month ago to, to really talk about how do we truly work together to make change in this country. We need the progressive left to push um, um, the Democratic center um, in, in directions that are really going to serve Americans at all levels. Um, banking reform, um, trade issues, these are things that we're all concerned about. Again, they're LGBT issues as much as they are anyone else's issues. And we do need um, our folks in Congress that can, uh, you know, again, fight against sort of big business interests and big money interests and bring it back to the folks who often are supporting Trump, it seems, these days, which really troubles yeah. me. The worker in Ohio who thinks somehow he or she is magically going to get um, wages raised or better benefits or better health care in a Trump administration, that's, that's simply not the case. And we, we know that. History has told us that. So I do think um, we have the opportunity to push the Democratic Party more progressive um, in this coming uh, four years or eight years, actually. Is that something yeah. that Stonewall would like to see? I mean, what are the issues that, you know, if you could have a magic wand and – a president, Hillary Clinton, did X, Y, and Z, what would be the things you'd like to see her doing as priorities? Health care, economy, um, tax restructuring, all things that both of them are talking about a bit, national um, security issues. We have to deal with all of those issues uh, and human rights and equal rights issues. Um, these are things that um, Hillary can be working on now, and I guarantee you that her opponents will not make true top priorities for the average American. What is it in the American character? Why do we keep electing presidents in one party and giving them a Congress <laughs> in another? I mean, have we not learned anything? This has been going I mean, on most of my life. You could argue that that's part of our – one of our strengths is that things don't move very fast. Boy. <laughs> Well, well, and there's a perception of check and balance, yeah. right, that we're going to find balance. And I, I grew up in a world where that seemed to make sense. And you got, you know, Congress members of both parties. It was sort of an old boys club, which was a little troubling, but at the same time, they had a respect we for each other. were sort of playing by the same rules. Playing by the same rules. And if you could have diversified that and they could talk to each other, um, I think it would be a great thing. Checks and balances have now turned into, and I think for the first time in, in the first Obama administration where you had – hostile conservative Congress members actually say that our goal is to stop the president from doing anything. That's shutting down this country, and it's not, it's not, it's not okay. It's not really a check or a balance. It's, it's just a, a thing is coming to a halt. Um, up until recently, and I would say this is in part because of our great successes mm -hmm. in our community, it's been a truis truism that if you are LGBT, you are a Democrat. And with a few exceptions. But there is a shift. And as our last guest from Log Cabin kind of demonstrated, even among younger conservatives, that the it doesn't necessarily mean if you are LGBT that you are going to click the Democrat box. Does the Democratic Party need to kind of step up its game to keep this constituency or what needs to happen to sort of recognize that? Younger people generally who may not have a m memory of our history to get to this point are choosing, which is their right as Americans. Both parties, all parties uh, need to step up their game. It's simple enough. Um, civil rights, equal rights um, are issues that impact everybody. I mean, you know, the black community, LGBT community, Latino community, uh, immigrants, young folks are all folks that – the Republican spin machine wants to say the Democratic Party takes for granted. I don't believe Democrats uh, take any of these communities for granted. I do believe we've spent so much time with political infighting, we haven't focused on the grassroots support people need. I mean, I'd love to see campaign of offices stay open in the off years and help direct people into services, ha help do um, you know community-driven work to support all these different communities we've mentioned. Um, i got to tell you, um, the Democratic elected officials I know do not take any of these 
communities for granted. Uh, but our goal is we have to listen more. We have to spend less time campaigning. And I'll say this for all parties, and Democrats as well, we have to spend less time campaigning and raising money, which is another reason we want big money out of politics, um, uh, and spend time in communities. And I think the Democrats are far ahead of, of uh, the Republican Party in doing that. You've been working in this area for a long time, and I'm wondering if you are seeing a difference mm-hmm. between sort of the n- newest members to the political process mm-hmm. and activists that have been around in a long time, or a difference mm-hmm. in priorities or, or methods, or is it about the same? I, I, I laugh a little at that because I think methods are entirely different because everything starts with a hashtag. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just getting caught up on it. Hmm. Um, I think, I, you know, I just turned 50. And a lot of folks my age, we, we're we doing that classic look back. You know, back in my day. Um, <laughs> That's you know, what we things. get to do when we get older, though. <laughs> we get to lord this over younger people and be all bitter that they have no memory of how we struggled. <laughs> We, we get to do that. But I look, for example, at the HIV epidemic, which, again, I, you know, I spent a lot of time as AIDS coordinator under Mayors Hahn and, and V. Ragosa saying to people it's not just a gay issue, right? Uh, HIV is, is a black issue. HIV is an, is an Asian issue. So we actually put billboards up to say that. We love to go back to those days and talk about what younger people sort of missed to make their um, decisions in life. And I got to tell you, they have more access to all of that than we ever did because of simply being more internet savvy than we are. So I think they, we, we don't support millenn- millennials enough by understanding that they actually really do understand what's going on and they want to make decisions. And us 50 plus folks need to maybe give them a little more room uh, and control. And I'd love to see a lot more younger elected folks um, be moving in at the state, local and federal level. Are you seeing a interest in activism in young people or is because we hear about kind of this, you know, 20 something on we and I'm, I'm not bu- quite buying that that's happening. I'm not buying it at all. We, you know, I've been I think I've been president of Stonewall six years. I have to check that. And I've been a member probably 17, 18 years now. And there is more than ever in those years a, a crop of new young Folks who, you know, they work, some of them work for elected officials, some of them do lobbying work, some of them are just community leaders that are really interested in advancing an agenda, and I really think they're the future of Stonewall. And I'm, I'm trying to actually step down. We have our next elections in July and really make sure we've got, um, you know, a path for all these new young leaders to go forward. Well, and one thing about the terribly young is that they don't remember a time when there wasn't a Hillary Clinton on the public stage. It's like, we remember yeah. when she showed up and said she wasn't going to bake cookies, but that is... That's and and I just, it's just such an amazing thing to think of her as as she's now like this gray eminence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something else that's come up in this election is I think that we've never seen such a feeling of kind of disgust generally about the democratic process. And from your perspective and your work, how do you think we are going to heal this rift, not just between left and right, but – this fear that we seem to have about one another or people who disagree. Um, how do we bring back voter confidence, confidence in the system? You were talking about the civility of the past. Can we get back there? There's a level of honesty and integrity that we've lost from political discourse. I hope we can get back there, but I think it's many, many years. Uh, it comes back to the point where I think we need to provide direct services on the street to people to give them faith in them getting their services and being heard. And, I, you know, it's funny. I complain day and night about a, a, the conservative media machine. At the same time, I think, wow, do I sound just like them complaining about, you know, a liberally <laughs> biased media? Um, There is a difference. Um, One difference is one side of that argument tries to make sure people are informed. And if honestly there's a slight bias towards really working for the people, hey, the other side wants to create these myths that just aren't – they aren't based in reality at all. Everything from climate change is a hoax so we can win elections to all this voter fraud is going on and people's grandmothers are voting three times. It doesn't even exist. And and I'd love to – if I can take a moment on, on that, Ben, you know, we've – over a decade, we've got we've got several major, major, major um, research projects that show over about a dec- 10, 12 years, um, there have maybe been 31 cases of voter fraud with voter ID issues. Right. 31 cases in the entire country in more than a decade. So this whole made-up story is a fantasy, and conservative media is willing to do that, willing to sell out, that Trump was almost assassinated the other day. Made up, 
right? And then perpetuated when it was clearly false. You wouldn't have been back on that stage right. if that were a so terrible this, threat. This is the downside to being older. One day it will be but done more civilly, but we won't well, be around. We won't to be see around. <laughs> That's why we need young people. Get involved. Oh, get involved. Well, thank you so much for coming by. <laughs> That's Stephen Simon, the executive director at the City of Los Angeles Department on Disability and the president of the Stonewall Democratic Club steering – just Stonewall Democratic Club, not just the steering committee, <laughs> the whole darn club. Thank you so much for joining us. And because it's radio, you all miss out on the fact that he showed up in his suit and tie, he which has never dapper, happened. I know. not 50. I'm just so, yes, sort of sick to say. So for more information on the Stonewall Democratic Club, you can go to their website, which is stonewalldems.org.